I've been slowly picking away at reorganizing the shop and coming up with better storage solutions. I wanted to figure out a design that let me store some of my smaller power tools, but also gave me access to some of the hand tools I commonly use around my table saw. So that's where the idea came from for this cabinet with sliding panel doors. All you've seen me do so far is break down plywood, so let's jump to an animation so I can explain the design a little better. I want to incorporate sliding panel doors, and I thought wall control panels would be the best way to do this. This would give me tool storage on the outside of the cabinet, but still space on the inside of the cabinet to store the small power tools I wanted to. Now I'll go into this a little bit later, but I use drawer slides to be able to make these slide panels. To limit confusion in a sea of Baltic birch plywood, I tend to label all my pieces with blue tape as I'm breaking them down. Personally, I think that pocket holes are ideal for making cabinetry like this. With the outer carcass of the cabinet cut out, I used these spacers to be able to lay out where my shelves were going to go, and then I attached those as well with pocket screws. With the carcass set aside, I can now start working on the frames for the sliding panel doors. The frames are the same size as the wall control panels, and on the top and bottom there's a ledge built in to be able to mount the drawer slides. So I have all my pieces cut out and as I said earlier, label as you go. I even put a pH on anything that needs pocket holes and that way I don't do like I did on the cupboard and add pocket holes where they're not needed. Um, it also is helpful when you're working like material like this because, well, these aren't the same pieces, but I mean, they're similar. So you don't screw up. Anyways, helpful trick. I can't believe how much use I'm getting out of the new workbench. If you haven't checked out that video, I'll leave a card at the end of this one so you can go check that out next. So pocket holes tend to move around as you're working with them, so I find clamping everything down just makes it that much easier. Pocket hole in is also made a lot easier with the clamp like this from Rockler, which is designed to hold the piece in place and actually uses the pocket hole for clamping pressure. Okay, with the frame done, I added the bottom mounting plate, which would house the lower drawer slide. Okay, I hope this isn't confusing, but I mounted the section of the drawer slide that would typically go onto a drawer box onto the sliding panel and the section of the drawer slide you would typically mount on the inside face of a cabinet on the outside face of this cabinet. Make sense? I love it when I do something and I don't hit that button that says record. Anyways, this is kind of where I'm at. I'm attaching the second panel. I already have the first one in place. First one I used, I measured, so I'd be able to line up my second one perfectly. And I just have some scrap material here that's kind of being used as a gap. But I use that basically to line up where the second piece has to be or the second shelf has to be, and then just slid everything out of the way so I could install my drawer slides. Now, I hope this isn't a shocker to you, but plywood isn't typically very consistent as far as thickness or thickness is concerned. Anyways, so I waited until my box was assembled with my bottom drawer slide attached before attaching the mounting plate and the drawer slide to the top half. So I have lots of plans for the future of this channel and I super appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, I would love to see you do that and let me know below if you have. Thanks guys. Okay, I'll show you this on the top because I haven't screwed up and marked it this time. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide the second panel, like technically the first panel, out of the way. And then I can just make a pencil mark. It's hard to see it, but I can just make a pencil mark at the end of where the bracket, shoving bracket is. And then just attach it based on that. And on these ones, I'm going to use the slots that slide left to right, just so I can adjust the gapping as best as I can, uh, as opposed to the, as you can see, you have. Um, your fixed holes as well, and further back there's actually um, 
vertical holes as well as opposed to horizontal. So uh, it's a nice thing about these rocker drawer slides. So that's what I'm gonna do. With the cabinet more or less together, I could start thinking about how to mount it to the wall, and I went with a French cleat system. And yes, in this shot, you can clearly see me putting the French cleat on for the first time backwards. So almost 10 years ago when we moved into this house, one of the first things to go up in the garage was this 4x8 sheet of pegboard. And it, for me, has been an eyesore since day one. So it was an oddly satisfying moment when we took this down. So not so pro tip, but I always add one screw whenever I'm putting any kind of a shelf or mounting bracket on the wall. That allows me to basically have a third hand to be able to level out my piece and add my second screw to attach it and secure it to the wall. Not, not so graceful there, Chris. And for the first time, I could actually see what this would look like hanging on the wall. And to be perfectly honest, with just the one cabinet, I felt the wall look bare. So I decided to spruce it up a bit. And the first job was to make a sign with my logo on it out of some walnut plywood. I mounted Baltic birch plywood on either side of the cabinet so I'd be able to hang tools that I commonly reach for in the shop. And let's be honest, half the joy of owning woodpeckers tools is to have them displayed on the wall. I also made some simple brackets so I had a spot that I could hang my crosscut sled. All right, I absolutely love these silicone mats from Rockler. I actually use these all the time, but I don't have a great way to store them. So what I did was uh, I actually drilled some holes into this PVC pipe uh, and used this ridiculously long bit. And the reason I like this is because of the countersinking tip. Uh, what this allows me to do is go through one side and then just mark on the other side where my hole has to go. So these, I got two of them, are gonna go and mount underneath here. pretty excited about all the changes that have happened in the shop over the past couple months. I've got lots more design ideas and storage ideas coming out. And I don't know if it's my vanity, but I just love the way this looks and it actually is a motivator to keep the shop more organized. Again, I appreciate you watching this sweaty back dude work in his shop. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear those below. Thanks again for watching. I've queued up two more videos here that you can watch next and see some of the other projects that I've done in my garage. See you guys.